Fat lives matter. 90% of the content we absorb through our eyeballs today is overstimulating garbage. And it reminds me that I should hit pause every once in a while and stop to smell the roses, so to speak. It also reminds me that I can accomplish that in a few select video games. And the first one that comes to mind is Skyrim. So if you're feeling stressed like me right now and could use a break, then sit back and get cozy. Because today we're exploring some of the best spots in Skyrim to turn your brain off and chill for a sec. I asked my lovely community to send me their favorite spots, so special thanks to those people who did. And if you think this looks cool and you want to be part of the experience too and help me create content, I record all my content live on Twitch, so head over there and drop a follow if you want to join in next time. Low Poly Lobotomy says, sitting outside your home and taking in the rift. So that's on the other side, there's a balcony. Oh yeah, oh absolutely. This, I really like this because you can see the lake and then you have the beautiful mountains in the background. The nighttime trees look a little weird, but this is definitely a pretty cozy spot. And the best part is there's no NPCs barraging you with dialogue all the time, right? And I'm noticing that the clouds are like floating on the mountains and that looks really cool. The clouds are moving underneath the skybox, which is a nice detail, isn't it? Good job, Todd. That looks nice. I think anywhere by the water, for sure bonus points, because everybody loves the sound of the water, the little waves. And I wish Skyrim had more other ambient sounds like insects and birds, because there would be a lot of bird sounds and insects. Like we can see insects, but I can't hear any insects. I can hear birds every once in a while. Maybe during the day there's more of those noises. We'll check the daytime. Okay, now what do you see and hear? Now I can hear more breezy sounds from the trees. I really like that. Especially mixed with the music in the background. There's more birds. Oh, and you can even see a little guy over there farming. Grinding up his wheat. That's cool. We can see pretty far away, actually. All right, so now we rate it. I think if it had a chair or somewhere to sit, our character would probably you know, be more than willing to take a nap here. And me as a player, I think this is a pretty good spot. I'm gonna give it eight, I think. I think we're gonna find better spots. Oh, you could fish as well. Yeah, that's a good point. I think we'll find better spots, but this is this is a very, very good one. <laughs> you give it a nine. Wow, okay. Eight, 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 six, six point five. Rob, are you are you giving it a 6.5? Are you just like a stickler? You need to find the perfect spot? Or there's actually some things about it that you hate? Maybe if you're afraid of heights, it wouldn't be the best, right? Because it's kind of high up. I think Rob's score brings it down a little. Like there's a couple nines, but then Rob said 6.5 and Jared said 7. So I think 8 is pretty, pretty right there. I've always liked the forest around Riften with its yellow-leaved aspen trees. And I actually think there's another one we can do at the same time. So we've got the rift, especially around the lake. We'll find a good spot around the lake that's not that house. And then also within the forest, not by the lake, I think is what burner means. Ooh, what about this? Ooh, this is not a bad, this is not a bad view, is it? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. The bandits will lower the trip advisor score. Actually, yes, I think you're right. I mean, it's definitely a note worth mentioning is that within the rift, there are bandits and lots of animals, lots of wolves and bears and stuff. So... It is dangerous, which makes it less cozy in my opinion. 
Oh, look at this, though. Ooh. Wait, okay, this is it. Th for me, this is it. Because you have this little island situation. But look at that. Isn't that nice? Even, like, with our character in, in it, it's quite nice. Is there some slatterfish eggs to eat? Is there? Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> you can have a snack. Do people eat raw slaughterfish eggs? Uh, I guess it's caviar, so yeah, why not? Yum! What does it actually give us? Is it a delicacy? Oh no, it's just an ingredient. Resist poison discovered. Okay, so it's a buff. It's a positive food to eat. Maybe. You can't hear the windmill, which is annoying. I wish I... I'm going to go over there and see if it actually has a sound effect. I don't know why I keep calling it a windmill. Don't ask. It's a it's a mill. It's a water mill. <laughs> Fish! Okay, it does have a sound. I like this sound. Too bad you can't hear it when you're over there. Ooh, look at that sky. That's kind of nice. <gasps> I love how it's reflecting in the water, too. That looks awesome. What is this smoke coming from what the heck is it supposed to be okay I don't think that's right but whatever Todd all of this just works what do you think we would smell here like in particular what do you think this smells like it would smell like a, a nice fragrant wood smell I think it would be really pleasant right other other than that we would smell like the wetness of the lake and maybe there would be some smells from somebody cooking something in this little town. And then the fresh breeze coming from the lake. I think the smells here would be better than the other, than the Riften place. Because Riften probably doesn't smell very good. It's a fishing town, right? So there's probably a lot of fish smell. And also it's the, all, the, the town of thieves. Oh man, I don't know. I think this one for me, even though I think it's 8.5 for me. And I really like this, the sound of this windmill. <laughs> Water mill. <laughs> old wood like that doesn't smell nice. Moldy and dry. Well, how do you know it's old? He's here every day. He comes and chops wood like a million times. So it's probably all new, right? It doesn't look rotted or anything. It looks pretty new and fresh. Ooh, look at that depth of field. Ooh, look at that depth of field though. A wood shot. I am now the Skyrim photographer, everybody. It, you guys seem to be a little bit lower than me on this one, but I think you just don't appreciate the sounds of this watermill as much as me. And I'm really going on the smells. And you still, I can still see the mountains. What do we got here for snacks? Ooh, fish snacks. <laughs> Fishing supplies. A nice place to fish. You could take your fishing pole and go over there. I have never tried the fishing stuff in this game. I really should do that. All right. Anyways, so that was the Riften Lake area. Oh, now we need to do the Riften Hills. Hills by the Rift with lots of yellow trees. We have here. He does want a duel. You looking for a fight, bro? Yeah. Well, uh, too bad for you. I have God mode on. <laughs> do your work. <laughs> the guard. Get him, little wood elf girl, get him. Look at her go. All those right hooks over and over. <laughs> Wise guard. He's like, I'm getting out of here. I better move out of the way. Anyway, hills, the hills. <laughs> I just had to do that because I had no clue what it was. Never seen that before in my life. There is a point where you get too high up though because then the distant terrain starts looking like poop. So, definitely has autumn vibes in this area. I think that's why so many people love the Rift, because it reminds them of autumn, and autumn is one of the coziest seasons. We didn't see any bears or wolves, surprisingly, either. Time is it. Okay, let's do the nighttime. I hear wind. Nighttime crickets and I love this music track 
This is one of the most cozy ones, I think. I bet this is gonna look so good in the daytime. Exposed, actually. <laughs> Dang it, Todd. Oh, yep. With the sun. Yes. There we go. This is it. That's so nice. And there are apparently no evil things trying to kill me up here. I don't know. This is really pretty. <laughs> This is this is gonna be high up for me because it's just beautiful. It looks like a like a wallpaper screenshot, doesn't it? Easy nine, yeah nine. I can't think of any downsides for this. It would smell amazing. Like I know what those pine trees smell like. They smell so good. Plus you're high up. It'd be like really fresh air, and it would be breezy because you're high up as well. You could just sit here and be zen forever. I could anyway. But I think this spot right here is a really good example of the game being very good at doing this. And I can't think of a spot that has the same type of atmosphere like this in Oblivion or Morrowind. Morrowind has a slight handicap because the view distance is very low in that game due to how old it is. You're giving this a 7.5, you're too spoiled with nature. Okay, Martin, but that's real life. This is a video game. Like within the context of a video game, you can't compare it to real nature. I mean, you sort of can, but like, it's never going to be as good as real nature. <laughs> I'm rating it within a video game, sort of. But I also, you're standing your, okay, fine. You're standing your ground. It's hard to explain. And this doesn't happen to me that often anymore, but like every once in a while when I'm playing a video game, I'll come across a spot like this and I just have to stop and look at it and admire all the artistic value, I guess, in it. The, the, the developers created this for us to look at and to enjoy. And so it's kind of like real life in that sense where you're missing out on it if you don't stop and look at it. And I know it's a video game, so it's not as serious or important, but it's cool that we can get that sort of feeling within a video game nowadays. You know, it can kind of trick your brain into being in that mode of being out in nature and being calm and cozy when you're in your house playing a video game. And there's not a lot of games that do that for me anymore. There's very few. Skyrim is one of the only ones that I really get that vibe in sometimes. Solitude is so chill. The Dark Souls pause mod with the mod that adds tons of books so you can read in the Solitude Inn in real time between adventures is peak. Sorry, I know that's not a vanilla way to play. Tee hee 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 hee. But I also want to, wanted to point out about this comment is that almost nobody plays vanilla so it's completely valid <laughs> to have like mods and everything in your chill experience in skyrim so we're gonna do that one first this we're going to the solitude inn and we'll find a cozy spot to sit and we'll read a book the inn might be kind of empty if everyone is at the execution <laughs> stoke the fire take a seat and get the cold out Ooh, the welcome message that you get when you walk in is really nice. Okay, hold on. There's some wind noises happening. Is it windy outside? Oh, it is, it's storming. What is going on here? Did he escape his execution? What is going on? Did I break it by like going into the inn right away? <laughs> that's never happened before. <laughs> the greeting that you get when you walk in. I think that's a bonus, right? For sure. Now we can hear the storm outside because of vivid weathers that's not actually in the vanilla game we need to find a book actually i'll take that because <clears throat> i'm an adventurer oh how did they see me 
You have committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. How do they catch me? What say you in your defense? Smart woman. If those rebels think they can best us, they have another Well, it's fine. I gotta go get a book anyway. Anyways. Hello. Now, I'm gonna assume that the person that submitted this, Lurline, doesn't mean that they want to sit at the bar. Could sit at a table. Oh, here's a book. There's a book right here. Oh. Let's try this out. I find it a little distracting that there's a bard singing in my ear. But that could just be me. Find the pirate's corpse in the castle tower dungeon. Get arrested and go to jail. Convince the guards to give you access. What the heck? Is this another new thing? I need to just play this game again. Why is there so many new things? I definitely think that Lurline is on to something with reading books in the inn, but I don't like this spot in particular. So what's a better spot? Oh, wait a second. Here we go. Harvesting Frostbite Spider Venom. Now that's a good read. <laughs> An adventure for Nord, Nord boys? Okay, that's cute. Kolb was a brave Nord warrior. One day, his chief asked Kolb to slay an evil dragon that threatened their village. Go through the mountain pass, Kolb, his chief said. You will find the dragon on the other side. Kolb took his favorite axe and shield and walked to the pass where he found a cold cave, a windy cave, and a narrow cave. Oh, it's a choose your own adventure. Oh, that's cute. Okay, chat, what should we do? Enter the cave? The cold cave, the windy cave, or walk up the trail? We're gonna go with windy. So then we need to go to page eight. A strong gust of wind blew Kolb's torch out and knocked him into a pit where he split his head and died. The end. You killed him. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Trail. Somebody said trail. Let's try that. Twelve. Climbing up, Kolb found a camp. He met a wise man who shared bread and showed two paths to the dragon's lair. One went through the hills and the other went through the marsh. Should we take the hills or the marsh? Marsh, hills, marsh, marsh, marsh. Okay. Three marshes. All right. Marsh it is. Treading through the marsh, Kolb discovered a wailing ghost blocking his way. Ooh, should we, should we attack the ghost or should we give the ghost some gold? <laughs> I feel like one of these is obviously a bad idea. Maybe they're both bad ideas. They could both end to death too. Who knows? Bribe, give, give, give. Okay, <laughs> all right. Kolb remembered a, a story his grand told him and tossed two gold chits for the ghost. It faded away, allowing him to pass. Yay! Turn to page seven. Okay. Leaving the marsh behind him, Kolb could see the dragon's lair nearby, as well as a small welcoming tavern. Hmm. Should we go to the lair or should we go to the tavern? Tavern, lair, tavern, tavern. Always hit tavern before lairs. Okay. Kolb stopped at the tavern to rest before fighting the dragon. High elves ran the tavern, however, and poisoned his mead so they could steal his gold. The end. <laughs> okay. Kolb found the lair where the dragon slept, tendrils of smoke wafting from his nostrils. The air made Kolb's eyes sting, and he nearly slipped into the bones of men picked clean. The beast lay on its side, the throat and belly both waiting targets. Do we strike at the neck or do we strike at the belly? Kolb crept towards the belly of the beast, but no sooner had he taken his eyes off the head of the beast than it snapped him up and ate him whole, ax and all. Oops. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't the belly. <sighs> oh, maybe not. The head of the ax lodged itself in the tough, scaly neck of the beast. It wailed and thrashed, but Kolb held on and eventually sawed through the neck, killing the beast. Kolb returned home victorious and his village was never bothered by the dragon again. The end! Yay! <laughs> okay. Good job, chat. You defeated the dragon. Okay, so as far as the coziness factor of this spot, though, that's another story. 
It bothers me that that green potion on the shelf is like tipping over a little bit. <laughs> you can see the uh, innkeeper slacking off over there. You wouldn't get as much of a draft from people walking in and out because you're quite far away. But I think the fire, does the fire add more cozy points than the balcony view though? That's a question. I guess it depends on what you like. If you want to be more in the atmosphere of the inn, you would come down here, right? And if you want to sit by the fire. But if you want to be sort of away from it all, looking over it, if you're more of an introvert, maybe you would pick the upper level. Maybe if there wasn't a cabbage in the fireplace. <laughs> What's wrong with... I love cooked cabbage. I mean, yeah, it can be a little stinky, but... I guess it's like a cafe vibe. Like, do you like going to a cafe and just sitting there amongst the people, maybe with some nice jazz in the background or or no music, and you're just reading a book? I once captained a ship called the Argent Raptor. She struck an iceberg and went down just north of Windhelm. But then you do have a no okay, but a part of the okay, but this is not okay. Weeks. All right. I've already learned to stay out of Captain Safia's way. Did I say you could sit by me? No, I did not. Sir? Forget wine, women, and wealth. Give me a calm sea and a good book, and I'm happy. Oh. Should we enter that in our list? A calm sea and a good I book? I hear Adonato Liotelli <laughs> staying up in Windhelm. Uh, this is negative points, because NPCs are bothering me. Don't misunderstand me, friend. I like my quiet, and I like to read. But you trifle with my ship, my crew, or my captain. That was the most uncozy thing anyone's ever said to me. I like everything about this super cozy, except I think it's going to be like a 7.5 because of the NPCs ruining it. Could he have said anything more relevant to the situation? Yeah, he said he liked reading. Oh! Okay, I didn't... I just hit activate. I wasn't even looking. What did I even take? I'd rather I take me to jail. 6.5. Yeah, six, but I'm bumping it up to 6.5 because I did really enjoy the books and I enjoyed the atmosphere until the NPCs caught up to us and started harassing us. But the idea of it is great. And I think if Skyrim wasn't being Skyrim, it would be way cozy. It, it might have been like a 10 for me if it wasn't Skyrim being Skyrim. However, now we're in jail, which uh, is kind of fortunate because... Is this the guy that we need? Oh, it's Kevin! There he is! You know, it's really not bad, actually. We've got light from outside. We even have a candelabra. Let's test it out. We have a friend as well. Kevin is here. I mean, there's nobody annoying us down here. And there's reading material. 15 men, a sunken treasure and a lost ship. That's what I left behind. It took less than a day to sail to Blackbone Isle. Captain said we needn't worry about the cold, so we left the furs and packed the steel. Seemed like an odd thing. No one but us knew about this place. Still, didn't matter much as we were making good time. I reckon we were about a league away from the cave when all of a sudden the wind died. They came up behind us, sabers rattling like ice rays. Next thing I hear is the screams. I jumped into the skiff, cut the bastard loose. Language, Todd. And started to paddle. Didn't have time to look back. Now, time's all I got. Maybe if we had more men or a sodding priest, we could have made it. I've got the map at least. Hit it under a loose brick behind the bench. I just need to get out of this dungeon before the sickness takes me. Well, that didn't happen, did it? Too bad that Kevin's head fell off. You won't get anything out of me, you filthy sons of workers. <laughs> Let's go over there and kill her. I agree. Oh, no, I can't reach her. Is she not? Oh, there she is. Hey. Hey. Disable. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Leave me be, Imperial. I haven't got anything to say to you. I've opened your door. You here for my next interrogation? I got nothing but time. Oh my god, he doesn't know how to come in here. That's funny. Oh no, he's just shooting me. Oh, that's fine. I'm in god mode, aren't I? Am I able to lock it? Yes, but they got through.
I will have my peace and quiet. There. It's perfect. Now I have even more company as well. You hear that? I swear there's something out there. In the dark. What? Where? Okay, that was ominous. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what does he think? It's Halloween? Come on, dude. We're transitioning into cozy season now. I like hopping around the icy foes flows to the north and east of solitude, especially at night. I pop on a nice warm coat and wander around near the lighthouse. Or just look at the playful horkers you can find there. So very cozy. You can feel a million miles away from any human activity. We're going to definitely need to change the weather. It is night still. This area is really nice. And I do like being out in the icy things, even though it's really cold. Oh, yes. Yes. Gorgeous. Okay. Do we want to be on top of the lighthouse or... Or just around it? Oh, this is kind of nice. Like with this lantern view. Wandering around near the lighthouse. So not on the lighthouse. Let's find a spot around the lighthouse. Ooh, I like that view with a ruin over there. Yeah, I think that's a good one. So this is sort of the border, if you will. And there's a giant body of water here rather than just a little lake. So this is pretty cool. Okay, I love this view. By the lighthouse, you can see this ruin over there. You can see this um, beached ship over there. And I think the distant terrain looks really nice with the fogginess behind the trees. That looks beautiful. Plus the sky and the moon. Yeah. Solid eight, nine, I like. This is really nice to me. 8.5 or 9. Yeah. Ten. Bob Ross ten. Bob Ross out of 10? Wow. <clears throat> that is a high score. <laughs> Probably smells like horkers. Because there's horkers around. <laughs> oh, wait a second. What about... Hold on, hold on. What about a view of Solitude? I think that was really good, though. That... that I don't, It's going to be hard to beat that view that we just looked at. Okay, I'm stuck now. That's pretty nice. I bet this particular view looks better during the day. I do like the sounds. I'm listening to the waves. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, I'm going to give both of these views really high scores. Maybe one more. 6 p.m.? Yeah. This looks very classically Skyrim. It's still really, really nice, though. It definitely looks better at night, though. I don't know. You, you guys like daytime or nighttime? It's a 10. Much you, much view. Very like. I don't know, man. I think I gotta give the, I gotta give this a 10. I love the water. The wave sound effect is just really relaxing. I mean, even out here, like there's not much going on, but there's just something about this area that's really nice. It would be quite chilly though. However, it's not windy really right now, so it might be nice. Quite a long message. Jack. But my favorite spot, I always just take pause in Skyrim, are mainly Elder Gleam Sanctuary. I love the lush caves in general in this game, but Elder Gleam just stands out. The twisting rivers, the butterflies, and the ambi ambiance. Ambiance. I love it quite a lot. 
There's definitely way more, maybe even more niche locations, but I'd have to reinstall Skyrim to pinpoint them all. Maybe I will. I think you should. Pinwheel, 8279. The Elder Gleam. It's so beautiful, and but immediately everything goes horribly wrong. A wonderful little quest. So let's go there. This person mentioned, uh, nearby is also a small hot springs with a couple hunters you always stop to take a break at. And you know what? I actually remember doing that exact thing when I did my very first playthrough of Skyrim on the channel. And it was, uh, it was like a role play playthrough. And I wonder if this was the same spot. Anyway, uh, this, yeah, this cozy spot did come to mind for me personally, this exact spot. Why is there a sword like stood right here? It's weird. Well, this spot particularly, I think is very, very cozy. And the NPCs that are here don't seem to be annoying either, right? All the benefits, you can chill, take a nap, you can go yes. into the hot springs. It's hot and cozy. They don't care if you get naked. They have yes. beer or wine. They're hunters, so they're gonna have some snacks. And the view looks pretty good. I don't know how high I would rate that. It's pretty cozy, but i it's not as good as the other spots, I don't think. I like 7.5. I, I agree with that. Personally, I would love to sit in some hot springs, or rather a hot tub somewhere, and just chill. It definitely has a nice, beautiful, comforting vibe to it with the big waterfalls and <clears throat> the rivers. I like the sunlight peeking in through the holes in the roof too. Roof. The roof of the cave. The ceiling of the cave. It's not really a roof. Do I have to hit the roots in order to get up there? Is that requirement or does Todd let me cheat I like this I like this spot this is nice you get the tree the waterfall in the background the rocks are a little weird but or is it better to have more of the cavern I don't know I feel like you kind of need the tree right hmm I think it's a different vibe up here by the tree it's more calm up by the tree and quiet, but down there you get the relaxing, uh, you know. Oh. How did you get over there? <laughs> You're not cheating like me. Down here you get the very relaxing waterfalls and stuff. So I don't know. What do you think it smells like in here? I bet it smells like sort of wet greenery, like the mossy smell. It's very misty and you're probably getting sprayed with water when you're standing here. I think it is a very relaxing spot. It's got a lot going for it and I love the tree in the background. I don't know how long I would want to stay here. Like these people clearly love it and they want to like live here forever, but maybe it's just not exactly my vibe. I think I want to give it eight. Like a solid eight. It's really good, but to me, it's not quite as good as the other areas for the longevity of the chilling. It is very unique as well, which is really cool. It's interesting to look at, right? The one thing that isn't great about it is the sounds. Like you do get the waterfall sounds, which is nice, but if you listen, all you can hear otherwise is that ominous cave background noise where it's like Ooh, and it almost sounds like haunted and scary like the other caves are supposed to be in the game. 
and this is technically a cave interior so the game just assigns it that sound but I, I think there should be maybe a custom sound or maybe a custom music track for this place when we talked to Danica and we got the quest there was this like glimmery shimmery sound that I really liked and I thought that should be the vibe of this interior like what if Todd and friends designed a background music track just for this area and made it really calming and twinkly with little chimes almost like sparkly sounding but also calm at the same time i think that would enhance it quite a bit but as it stands with the scary woo ghost sounds i think that hurts it because we don't have any other nature sounds we don't have birds there would be birds, by the way. There would definitely be birds in there, in here. There might even be other animals wandering in, who knows. But we don't have any of those sounds, so... That unfortunately hurts it a bit for me. I need the sounds. This is night, apparently. <laughs> <clears throat> so then I guess the question is, how would it be at, in daytime? I think that's a little too bright up there. <clears throat> the tree is highlighted a bit more, but... Other than that, I think it's the same, right? There's a little bit more lighting. I would I would rate it higher if it had better sounds. But as it stands, it's an eight for me. Let's see what happens. No witnesses. Yes, it's now my private garden. <laughs> My character looks so weird. <laughs> I forgot how weird she looks. She does look like the kind of psychopath that would claim this sanctuary for herself, doesn't she? Sorry to the people who submitted the Elder Gleam. I guess I should apologize. Next! Okay, Lake Illinolta, which I think is a very beautiful place in the game. Maybe even underrated, dare I say. I'm gonna go right to the Lady Stone. So this is right by where you start the game, kind of. I don't like how the mountains are all shiny, though. That's weird sometimes. I don't know why it does that. Oh, Who did that? Yes, I am mourning the loss of a bunny rabbit after slaughtering three human beings. <laughs> okay. Anyways, <laughs> Lake Linalta is beautiful, everybody. Then you have this side, which is more, like, that's more greenery. This is more snow, snowy on this side. But I love having the standing stone sort of in the middle. The only problem with this island is just the slaughterfish. But, I mean, if you're on the island, they don't get you. You do have to swim out here if you want a picnic or something. So I guess that's a downside. But once you get here, it's great. And you have a lot of space as well. You're just like by yourself with the butterflies. I'd say the region around Lake Illinolta. The hills in the rift are also very nice. Yeah, so we already did the hills in the rift for this person as well. But the region around the lake. So I think the island is the best, most relaxing, relaxing part. But uh, Lauren T. Georgette thinks that the area around the lake is the best. So which side of the lake? Nothing weird about these people. Don't worry about it. It's totally fine. Oh, and then you can get this little hut. Okay. Okay. Hold on, chat. This is actually a vibe right now. And you get the sound of the watermill in the background. And the weird smoke <laughs> from it <laughs> not your run of the mill farmers yep <laughs> right don't worry about it the game is fine the game is completely fine <laughs> the aurora adds so much to it doesn't it Skyrim is a really beautiful game, but it is a little bit desaturated. 
and it tends to kind of look a little bland sometimes, even with the vivid we weathers, and vivid weathers helps a lot, but sometimes it just needs a little something something. And this lighting with the aurora really gives it a nice pop. I think... You could go anywhere around the lake, and it would be beautiful, even without the auroras. I do like this area in general, like not just this one spot, but I really like hanging out around this lake. It's kind of cozy because it's right by Riverwood, right? Which is a very nice, cozy starting spot for the game. It's one of the first bodies of water that you... It is the first body of water that you see, technically, when you come down the path from Helgen, so... I think for a lot of people, it has a special nostalgic place in everybody's heart, which is... i That's got to be some kind of bonus. I feel like that's a bonus, for me at least. But it's definitely a 9.5. And maybe the 0.5, maybe I'm just knocking that off for the slaughterfish and the wolves and stuff that are around that might intrude on your comfort levels. <laughs> it's very serene. Yeah, it's a very nice spot. I'd say Lakeview Manor is the house you buy from Falkrith. It's out of the way of the hustle and bustle and repeating NPC lines of the cities. That's a good point. You can do crafting there and all the stations are close, so it's convenient. You have to build it first, so it kind of has a feeling of having a cabin. Well, a manor in this case. In the woods, where you build yourself. It's peaceful and there's a small tower you can build and you can look out from the top. It has been a great view of the lake and the mountains that definitely ended up as a screenshot on the background. Now we can't build the house, but we can go to the spot where you do build it and we can pretend. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. There are three hearthfire houses? Oh my goodness, I have to do another one then. I've only done one. Are they different? Are they significantly different? Can't believe I didn't know that. There's a lot of things I don't know about this game. Regardless of how many hundreds and hundreds of hours I've put into it. Okay, so chat, imagine, imagine that we did, ooh, there's a nice view over there. Imagine that we bought this plot of land and we're building a big house. And there are wolves, which definitely is a, a little bit of a downer, but... I feel like if you build the tower, it's on this side by the lake, so you, you might be like right here-ish. And if we pretend that we're in the tower, maybe we would be like this high up? Oh, hello. But we also have to imagine that if we built our house, we would be, <laughs> we would be in our house. It would be very safe and cozy and warm. Wolves attacking a mage down there. There's also a necromancer shrine. <laughs> Sacrificial shrine there that I feel like you would need to uh, remove if you did buy this plot of land. That's a little bit of a eyesore, isn't it? You love those necromancer parties? <laughs> yeah, they're a good time, aren't they? Oh! Just looks like a steel axe, right? Thank you, woodcutter! It's unique, but not good. Yeah. It doesn't even look different. It just looks... Doesn't it just look like a iron axe or a... It looks like a poopy axe is what it looks like. It doesn't even do anything cool. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm allergic to bad items. Hello. I'm guessing you're the one that did him in anyways. To get revenge. Now his... His woodcutter ghost can finally rest in peace now that you are dead. I think negative points for the uh, surrounding hostilities, like the necromancers and all the wolves. But you also do have the comfort of a house. Like after you build the house, it's a bit safer, right? Because you can just go in your house and nobody can follow you in there, theoretically. And I do, I do like the idea of having your own house. That definitely adds coziness. This area is nice. I do like the Falkreath area. It's sort of in between the snowy and the grassy. And for some reason, I like the way the trees look around here. And we also have a view of Lake Illinolta, which is really cool. Obviously, we just talked about how cool that was. So, 
Yeah, I'm gonna go for eight. I'm gonna go for eight for this one. There is a lot of hostilities, and I think this is a big eyesore. This necromancer thing, and they probably respawn. Plus the bone wolves are bad, you know. Oh, since getting here requires running into bandits. That's true. It's not like you have direct access, but you could say that with every spot that we've looked at, right? You have to go through some sort of hostilities to get to every place in Skyrim. <laughs> the sheer effort needed to build the house takes 0.5 off. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Like in order to reach maximum cozy factor, you have to put in hours and hours of gameplay. This one just says, Lord Mortos 979 says, Dawnstar hits different at Christmas time. And while it isn't exactly Christmas time yet, we're still going for the holiday vibes. It is November, so let's count it. That's so pretty. But I really like this because you can see the lighthouse, you can see the beautiful moon and the auroras in the sky reflecting down on the water. Let's get rid of that. The boat, I think, is a really important thing for Dawnstar as well, since it is like a, you know, a city on the water. A boat town, if you will. But the town itself is also pretty cozy. It sort of gives me like North Pole vibes. I think it's because it's nestled in the comfort of these rocks. It's almost like there wouldn't be as much breeze, you know? It wouldn't be as windy because the mountains are surrounding it. And that's kind of cozy. <gasps> Two moons! Okay. What about that view? Like a little bit of the tower up above and the two moons and the lighthouse and some of Dawnstar. Okay, this is a good shot. I would use this as my desktop. So the only downside with this, obviously, is that it's cold, but it's cozy at the same time, right? I can't my give it a nine or ten away. because it's not warm. What is it? And the NPCs are annoying. So I do I think it's gorgeous though. Like it's so pretty. But the actual score for hanging out and being cozy in it for a long, long period of time. It loses a point or two because it's very cold and because the NPCs are constantly talking to you. I suppose we could find a spot that's not... Like, here's a nice city view, I suppose. I guess if we stay here, there's nobody bothering us, so that's better. And we can still have our nice view. You would rate it higher once the Nightmare Quest has been completed? Oh yeah, that's true. Have you guys ever played World of Warcraft? This music right now. It always makes me think of the Night Elf areas in World of Warcraft, which is a huge nostalgia thing for me. If we get, if we're away from the NPCs, then I think 8.75. But I think with the NPCs, it drops down to 8. The coldness adds to the coziness. It adds it to me if I'm not outside in the, in the cold, but if I'm outside looking, if I'm inside looking out, then it adds it for me. It's weird. That's so pretty though. The auroras add so much beauty into the game. It is insane. The coziest spot was, which one did we rate 10? I think I rated 110, didn't I? But they were all pretty high. They were submitted for being cozy spots, so they better be cozy. But yeah, I liked the, the lighthouse area the best, I think. The Not that Dawnstar doesn't have its disappointments and, uh, you know, sort of scary things going on, but it it's just a nice cozy little town. I think it's more Christmas vibes than the other 
areas. Definitely, Winterhold is not cozy at all. It's not supposed to be either. It's like the opposite of cozy. Windhelm probably has some cozy places in it. The palace is kind of nice and cozy in there, but I don't know. Just something about Dawnstar. The college is kind of cozy. Mm, I don't think it is. <laughs> there's, there's too many annoying people in it. Dragons assault you constantly in the courtyard. And everything is just like cold stone. The Bard's College, however, that's a little bit cozy. Right. Well, we had one more, which unfortunately we can't really do. Plus, I also don't have time. Who's this one? Swim. The Ancestral Glade, where you have to collect the moths to read the Elder Scrolls for the Dawnguard DLC. I don't think you can go in there without the Dawnguard DLC. I could be wrong, but go and check that place out <laughs> if, if you want. I, I kind of remember what it looks like. And I do remember it being pretty cool. M sort of a unique spot like the Elder Gleam. Frog. But anyway, I probably could hack my way in uh, if I looked up some console commands and just like popped myself in there somehow, but I don't really have the time to do that. So I apologize to Raven's Wrath. I'm sure they are right and it's a very cozy spot. All right, it's the end of the video. If you're still here, you're either sleeping or you are very into it. So thank you either way. What did you learn about your observations of cozy places in Skyrim? I know the number one thing that I learned is that the sound effects are really important to me. And I gave some places a lower score just because they didn't have the sound effects that I was expecting to hear. And it's really interesting because it is something that I don't really pay attention to very closely when I'm just playing the game. But when I do stop and listen and look around, all of those things become very obvious and I noticed a lot of things that I had never noticed before, which is really cool. I feel like I'm getting more enjoyment out of the game, stopping every once in a while and just smelling the slaughter fish. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me today and I'll see you in the next video.